Can you see me above this? <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Um, and also, uh, thank you, Writer Studio. Good to see you again, Phil. And Strands, and of course, Kenny Review. When I read here last, it didn't have this great little container for water. It's fabulous. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read um, a few poems from my latest book, uh, Brain Fever, which sort of picks up where toxic flora left off. So in toxic flora, I primarily used um, articles from the science section of the New York Times as kind of a springboard, um, a lot of word association and play and fun. Um, I thought I was finished with science. And then you, you, know, you kind of get a little bit of a block when you decide you've done something and you're finished with it, because it's not really finished with you. So um, I decided to give myself some assignments. And these came in the form of mostly um, articles on neuroscience, which I knew nothing about, and I still don't know anything. So um, this is, I'll read a few poems from the section on consciousness and the brain. Um, the first one opens with a quote. Alarm. Before doctors learn how it is that the brain's lights turn on, they may have to know a lot more about what's happening when the lights are off. Benedict Carey. In her dark, she surveys empty. The vanity from the in-law's Bronx apartment, the brooch from a lover, the loafers by a coat tree, trench coat, the husband's profile, an alarm for news and forecast. Here, she appraises fidelity before the light violates. Also from the consciousness section, um, yet another Demeter poem, Demeter, Demeter. Porchlight, barley, poppy, then pomegranate, now French porch light. There's no longer sensation without one once cradled in tissue, <coughs> swaddled in blood, feeling her hiccup inside the inside. Turn the pages of a calendar to retrieve one's daughter from his underground vow. I must unlock the door, leave it ajar, since by degrees the son-in-law rations my weather. <coughs> Safe. Quote, the deeper that investigators dig for the origin of the of consciousness, the more hidden chambers they find. Benedict Carey. Inside the ant farm's plastic pane, the sandy routes disclose rooms to store a Harley retirement pin left by Grandpa Aaron, two wedding rings she cannot pawn or wear, a lacquer comb, a baby's incisor, and in her wall safe, the intercepted correspondence between husband and sycophant. She frantically revisits that mail to grasp their phrase, harmless, fun, to restore the unsafe, so familiar in the gritty tunnel on display. A bowl of spaghetti. Uh, and this begins with a little quote. <clears throat> a bowl of spaghetti. To find a connectome, or the mental makeup of a person, researchers experimented with the neurons of a worm, then upgraded to mouse, hoping to unravel the millions of miles of wires in the human brain that they liken to untangling a bowl of spaghetti, of which I have an old photo. Ray, in her high chair, intently 
picking out each strand to mash in her mouth. Was she too? Was that sailor dress from mother? Did I cook that sauce from scratch? If so, there was a carrot in the pot, as mother instructed, and I'll never forget, no matter which strand determines ardor as a daughter's verdict. Um, I also have a um, section on dream theory. Um, and in this one, I again, I gave myself an assignment with a lot of these. So I'll just talk about it for two seconds since it's the writer's studio. Um, I would uh, imagine, uh, I would just take an object and then kind of just do a lot of associational work with it and try and have fun. <coughs> The dream of a pillow. Zealous mother or breast. Zealous marshmallow, zealous feathers. Although the neuroscientist does not declare, so what? She does believe the brain observes props and scene in a lucid watchfulness, which may play out in proverb or verse or be utterly meaningless. Zealous codeine zealous noose. The dream of knife, of knife, fork, and spoon. I can't recall where to set the knife and spoon. I can't recall which side to place the napkin or which bread plate belongs to me, or how to engage in benign chatter. I can't recall when more than one fork, which to use first or what to make of a bowl of water. I can't see the place cards or recall any names. The humiliation is impressive, <coughs> the scorn. No matter how much my brain revises the dinner to see if the host was a family member, I can't recall which dish ran away with which spoon. You're a tough audience. <laughs> That was kind of funny. I think they laughed in Bryn Mawr. <laughs> Giraffes. After skimming the Sunday Times, Dad turned to the back of the magazine and tore out the crossword puzzle for his mother in Wisconsin. As routine as my calligraphy class on Saturdays, flute practice exactly 20 minutes on school nights and astringent twice a day. I love the idea of puzzles, but never tried my hand as problem solving rubbed up against rivalry. Red velvet cape, red velvet dress, trilling. Because nothing was never enough, and yet more than a small rectangular lawn and the pulsing marsh beyond. A puzzle might have been escape enough. A maze instead of crossword? No, cross words were our puzzles, after all. Although my sister and I adored jigsaw pieces, 500, a zoo, I think, giraffes, absolutely. <laughs> this is um, a poem that is uh, coming out in the um, Canon View. You see that um, David and I have a love of the environment and nature and all that stuff. Um, it's a little, um, it's a little sequence. Brilliance, a valentine. Like fireflies, what I cook up can present an unpleasant meal, although what I produce, admittedly, does not glow, although I wish I could produce glowy, larva-like things, sestina, sukiyaki, manifesto. Like firefly glow, I turned on during courtship. Harold said so, and he himself is brilliant, especially at night though not from enzymes in his tail. 
like female fireflies, I am remarkably picky. When checking out flashy males, because long lasting impulses mean a lot when it comes to, say, nuptial gifts, packages of protein injected with sperm, and it's crucial to pay attention. Yes, I tell my daughters, pay attention to attention. Unlike male fireflies, who do not need to burn many extra calories to make flashes because only a tiny bit of energy is needed, I do burn a lot of fuel in the service of being flashy. <laughs> Think <laughs> shimmying at Danceteria, reading at the New Yorican, leafleting at Kentile, and now walking Trudy. What can I say? The cannibal for tourist firefly that pounces, bites, and sucks the blood of the special other for ill-tasting chemicals, which it uses to protect itself from predators. Well, me too. I ingest her to protect against her. Like Professor Sarah Lewis, I view the meadow as a stage for passion and yearning, courtship duets and competitions for affection, cruel deception, and gruesome death. Like the professor, fluent in firefly, I am fluent in on the sly, on the fly, when circumstances are well, well lit. And I'll end with this one. The only thing you need to know is that um, my husband writes true crime, and one of his early books was called Depraved. I never sat around my backyard the night before heading off to Belize to study coral reefs, unlike Professor Sarah Lewis, and I would not have compared firefly sexual selection to Darwin's 1871 theory regarding male displays of antlers and feathers. Although, at the bookshop where Harold read from Depraved, I did notice his commanding array. Thank you. <laughs>